maintaining 1,138 years of tradition in the city and at this point in the proceedings we give the history talk so it's about a 10 minute talk if you've got time to stay if you've heard it before or if you have to be elsewhere or if you get too wet um, please feel free to wander off at any point that's absolutely fine uh, at the end of the talk if you've got any questions to ask or anything you want to know that I haven't covered in the talk then please feel free to ask me and I'll do my best to answer your questions. Uh, so as I said, the ceremony of the setting of the watch dates back to 886, when King Alfred the Great granted Ripon its first charter. Possibly due to the support from the Saxon settlement of Ripon against the Viking intruders and invaders. And it's said that because that was a spontaneous decision, nothing had been planned or prepared, a horn was given as a gesture of good faith and as a symbol of that charter. And that began this unusual connection between a horn and the city of Ripon. They decided to put the horn to good use and they appointed a wakeman. They gave the wakeman the horn and his job was to use that horn to set a watch in a similar way as I've done tonight. And then he had to patrol the area during the hours of dusk till dawn, making sure everyone could sleep safely in their beds because he would be keeping a lookout. So it started off as a night watchman type role. That continued and it developed and ultimately the Wakeman became responsible for crime prevention and law and order in the city. He was elected annually to the role but it wasn't a particularly popular office to hold because it came with a great uh, level of responsibility. Keeping law and order in any age is uh, quite a challenge so he had a lot of responsibility on his shoulders. Uh, he did have certain powers though. There was a door tax in Ripon that he could collect from the citizens and he could also fine people for their crimes and their misdemeanours and then with that money he could then employ others to help him to do the job. But if your goods were stolen or your property was burgled during the hours of the watch and it could be proven that the wakeman had been negligent in his duty, then he had to pay out compensation to you. Uh, and the wakeman really did become the first or the leading citizen of Ripon. He was a very, very important, powerful, influential man. 
and as time went on it was thought by many that perhaps the Wakeman and his constables were a little bit too powerful a little bit of a law unto themselves because they were without any form of regulation so in 1604 King James I of England who was also King James VI of Scotland he granted Ripon its second charter this time it was a written document which we still have to this day up in the town hall and uh, that charter aimed to make things a bit more democratic in Ripon. It put down in writing how Ripon was going to be reorganised uh, into a, a mayoralty and borough. And that meant that the role of the wake Wakeman was discontinued by that charter. And the last Wakeman that we ever had in Ripon then became the first mayor of the city. And we've had an elected mayor ever since. And the last Wakeman and the first mayor of Ripon was a gentleman by the name of Hugh Ripley. And after we've done the blast on the fourth corner of the obelisk, we doff our hat in that direction. And we're doffing our hat in the direction of that little house on the corner of the Market Square. That is the oldest building on the Market Square. It's known locally as the Wakeman's House. It's now the Wakeman's House Cafe. And legend has it that if the horn is not sounded to Hugh Ripley's satisfaction, Hugh Ripley was the last who was the last Wakeman and the first mayor of the city. Well, if he's not happy with the horn blowing, then his ghostly face is supposed to appear in that top attic window and all sorts of weird and wonderful things may or may not happen. Uh, and there's lots of local stories that concur with that belief, but none from me. <laughs> when Hugh Ripley became the mayor, he then didn't want to come out every night to set the watch as he had been doing as the Wakeman. So he decided to appoint a hornblower to do the job for him. So the duty remains the same, it remains continued, it remains unbroken, but the person doing it then becomes known as a hornblower and not as a wakeman. And it's still the case today that we're called hornblowers, it's still the case today we work for the mayor of the day, we're only ever allowed to blow the horn whenever and wherever the mayor of the day gives us the permission to do so. When Hugh Ripley became the mayor, he uh, established a new rule for his hornblowers. And he said, after the watch has been set on the market square, it's the duty of the hornblower to report to the mayor of the day, wherever they are in the city, and signify that the watch has been set by blowing three blasts of the horn, raising your hat, bowing your head, and shouting, Mr. Mayor, the watch is set. And we still have to perform that secondary duty to this very day. So it's not as ancient as the first part of the ceremony but it is still a good few hundred years old so after we finished on the market square we go to the mayor's abode of the evening normally that means we go to the mayor's house we have a very special mayoral lamp post in Ripon it has a lantern on the same as that one above the town hall door and every time we get a new mayor in the city the special mayoral lamp post is moved and relocated outside the new mayor's house it's connected to mains electricity so it lights up like a street light and we go and stand under that lantern to do the blast to the mayor normally the mayor does come outside to uh, meet and greet us sometimes in his dressing gown and slippers it has to be <laughs> <laughs> it is late sometimes uh, if the mayor is out of the city sick away on holiday or for whatever reason can't receive us under that lamp post then we do the blast to the mayor under that lantern Unless the mayor is at a civic function in the city, he might be at a concert at the cathedral or a dinner somewhere, or the rip and pantomime. And if that's the case, we go to that event and basically interrupt the whole proceedings and do the blast of the mayor wherever he happens to be. And it's just a rather quirky thing that uh, happens sometimes in Ripon. So you can see that the horn is very, very important to the civic life of this city. It's become our unofficial coat of arms. It's a symbol of the city. It's on all our badges and our insignia, like mine here. Even the bottom of our benches are a horn shape, and the cutouts on our bicycle racks are a horn shape. And once you know about that connection between a horn and the city of Ripon, you will start to spot horns in a number of places. So just to tell you a little bit about the horns, uh, we still have that original horn, the 886 horn. We still have that horn. We can't use it as a blowing horn anymore for obvious reasons. It's a, a very ancient and precious relic. But it does very much still take part in the civic life of the city in that it is processed on very special occasions. 
So it will be coming out in a couple of weeks' time for the Freedom of the City Parade of the Royal Engineers and the D-Day celebrations. It came out at Candlemas, it came out with the coronation. So it regularly comes out and is seen. Um, and then we have a number of blowing horns that we can use. The next oldest one is dates uh, to 1690. City Council bought that for six shillings and eight pence back in the day. 34p. <laughs> what an investment. It's still going strong, but it's not in regular use. It's our like backup horn. Uh, but I did play that one for a couple of years until recently. Um, the next oldest horn is our biggest one, that's the 1865. It's a great big African ops horn. That one's in regular use, as is the 1986 horn, given as a gift to the city by local business. And then in chronological order, we come to this one that I'm currently using. This is the 2019 horn. It's called the McCarty Quest Horn. It was given as a gift to the city by the mayor of the day. And the horn came from a local bull from Moulton. And the bull was called Setterington Quest. And Setterington Quest had a, a minor claim to fame because that bull appeared in the Dad's Army film. The most recent remake with Bill Nighy and Kathleen Zeta Jones and Toby Jones. If you ever watch that film, in the very opening sequences, Captain Mannering is chased into a bush by a bull. And that bull was Setterington Quest. And uh, basically, this is all that remembers. <laughs> <laughs> but his memory lives on, so he should be very grateful. Uh, and then we have the 2022 Platinum Jubilee Horn. That's in regular use. City Council bought and paid for that to commemorate Queen Elizabeth II's Platinum Jubilee. And that's our second horn of African origin. All the other horns are from British Longhorn cattle. Someone asked me about the horn up there. Um, that horn is blown in a different way. It's a weather vane. The obelisk was put here by John Aisleby, who owned the Fountains Abbey estate. And the weather vane was put up there by his son a few years later. Uh, the obelisk has been here since 1703. The weather vane was put on in 1781 by John Aisleby's son, William Aisleby, um, to commemorate his 60 years as an MP. And, um, that's a gilded horn and when it was put up there um, it was sealed as a time capsule and everyone was told and everyone was led to believe that the golden horn contained seven golden sovereigns when it had to come down a little bit early in 1986 because some repairs were needed to the obelisk of course they opened up the golden horn with great anticipation and uh, you've probably guessed what I'm going to say. <laughs> but unfortunately, the Golden Horn was empty. And all that was inside, apparently, was a bill for the repairs to the office. <laughs> <laughs> that apparently had been an unpaid bill. But that is resealed as a time capsule now, so it should be a bit more interesting when it is opened up. As I said at the beginning, the role used to be done by a single person. So the Wakeman is the night watchman, the Wakeman is the law and order role. Then it became a horn blower that was just doing the setting of the watch part. And then it became, in more recent times, a more civic or ceremonial office. Um, eventually, it became a horn blower who had a deputy. <laughs> so they were actually allowed to have some nights off. And the last recognised single post holder of the office of Hornblower, he retired in 2015. And since 2015, we've had a team of Hornblowers that have carried out the duties. We all have other full-time jobs and we do this uh, uh, as a civic office for a small amount of remuneration. Um, and there's currently four of us in the team. We've been four, three, four, we're back to four now. Um, on a rotor basis, um, to make sure like everyone who's gone before us we've covered every night of the week every day of the year whatever the weather we're here on the square uh, at nine o'clock but uh, obviously compared to those people who went before us that had no nights off we're we're pretty light, lightweight really <laughs> because we we're on two to three nights a week plus civic events so basically that's how we keep the tradition going apart from in lockdown when for 18 months we set the watch from our individual back or front gardens. Because the strict tradition is the 
watch has to be set within the bounds of the city so it still did fulfill that criteria we all live close to the square we weren't allowed to come uh, to our place of work no precedent had ever been set as to how does a hornblower work from home so we set the watch from our individual back gardens we posted it live on facebook every night we had quite a big following making sure that we were doing that and then we texted the mayor so modern technology now features in ancient horn blowing history which is rather amazing uh, but we much prefer to be here so, we prefer to be. so whatever brings you to Ripon I hope you enjoy your time here I hope the sun comes out I think it's supposed to be a bit nicer day tomorrow uh, thank you very much for coming out to see us it's very very rare that we ever come out and nobody's here but there's obviously nothing on television tonight so you're <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'll just end by saying thank you for coming and sleep safe all, the watch is set. <laughs>